Welcome to another episode of the React to End podcast. I'm your host, Mr. Meta. Today, we're delving deep into a topic that affects us all, the food we eat and the world we shape with our dietary choices. We often hear that being fully vegetarian is the most ethical and sustainable way to eat. But is it really as straightforward as it seems? Let's break it down. First, let's talk about the health aspects. Many people choose vegetarianism for its perceived health benefits. But, is it the right choice for everyone? Research suggests that strict vegetarian diets can lead to nutritional deficiencies. For example, vitamin B12, which is primarily found in animal products, is essential for our nervous system. Similarly, iron from animal sources is more efficiently absorbed by our bodies. Lack of iron can lead to anemia, fatigue, and weakness. And omega-3 fatty acids, vital for heart and brain health, are less abundant in a vegetarian diet. So, maintaining a balanced diet, whether vegetarian or not, is crucial. Now, let's consider the ecological consequences. You might think that by avoiding meat, you're doing your part to save the planet. But it's not that simple. Large-scale agriculture, both for crops and livestock, has its environmental footprint. Deforestation and land use are issues in plant-based agriculture, too. Moreover, monoculture farming practices can deplete soil quality, leading to long-term consequences. So, our choices should focus on sustainability, not just avoidance. And here's an intriguing perspective, the widely accepted concept that only animals can feel pain, while plants cannot, is not entirely accurate. It's important to recognize that plants are also living beings, and they exhibit responses to their environment. While these responses are different from the way animals experience suffering due to their more complex nervous systems and brains, it's a reminder that plants, too, are far from lifeless entities. A balanced diet requires the consumption of both animals and plants, but the question of which animals and plants to include often arises. It's essential to recognize that we are creations of God, and God knows best which vegetables and plants are intended for our consumption and which serve other functions in the natural system. Therefore, we should only eat animals and plants allowed by God to be eaten and avoid those forbidden by Him. Now, a pertinent question emerges as various religions claim their respective holy books to be the Word of God. With the diversity of beliefs, it becomes crucial to identify the right source of guidance. The approach should be one of impartial exploration, free from discrimination, and a sincere quest for the truth. In this pursuit, examining and delving into the texts and teachings of different faiths becomes a valuable endeavor, allowing individuals to make informed choices on their path to spiritual enlightenment. Recognizing that God is all-hearing and all-seeing, we come to understand the inherent complexity in discerning the truth amid the multitude of concepts presented to us. In this recognition, we acknowledge that ultimate might and power rest with God alone. Thus, it becomes imperative to turn to God in prayer, beseeching His guidance to lead us to the authentic source of knowledge and illuminate our path with the light of truth. Through this act of faith, we seek the divine wisdom necessary to navigate the maze of beliefs and ideologies, trusting in God's guidance to find the right way. In times of doubt and when we are in search of the correct course in life, it is essential to look towards the divine for counsel. God, the all-knowing and all-wise, serves as our ultimate wellspring of guidance. To request his wisdom, we can commence by reading the initial chapter of the Quran, Surah Al-Fatiha. Commonly known as the opening, this chapter is a potent entreaty that encompasses the core of our connection with the divine, underscoring his position as the ultimate guide. Let's delve into its English translation to gain profound understanding. I seek refuge with Allah from the accursed devil. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. These phrases are recited to seek protection from the influence of Satan and to commence an action, such as reading a Quranic chapter, with the blessings and guidance of Allah. In moments of uncertainty and when seeking the right path in life, it's paramount to turn to the Creator for guidance. God, the all-knowing and all-wise, is our ultimate source of direction. To beseech his guidance, we can start by reciting the opening chapter of the Quran, Surah Al-Fatiha. This chapter, often referred to as the opening, is a powerful supplication that encapsulates the essence of our relationship with God, emphasizing his role as the guide. 
Let's turn to its English translation for profound insights. Here is the English translation of Surah al fatiha In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. Praise be to Allah, the Lord of all the worlds. The most gracious, the most merciful. Master of the day of judgment. You alone we worship, and you alone we ask for help. Guide us on the straight path. The path of those who have received your grace. Not the path of those who have brought down wrath upon themselves. Nor those who have gone astray. Amin. This chapter is often recited by Muslims as an essential part of their prayers and serves as a profound supplication for guidance and wisdom. The term Muslim is derived from the Arabic word Islam, which means submission or surrender. A Muslim is someone who willingly and consciously submits their will to God and follows the teachings and principles of Islam. The core concept of Islam is the submission to the will of God and living in accordance with His guidance and commandments. This submission is the foundation of a Muslim's faith and practice. Allah is the Arabic word for God and is commonly used in Arabic-speaking countries and by Arabic-speaking Muslims to refer to the one God in monotheistic faith. It is the same God worshipped in Christianity and Judaism, and the term emphasizes the concept of monotheism. Now, let's circle back to our discussion about food choices. It's my hope that you'll take a moment to reflect on what constitutes the right food for you to consume. By doing so, you can ensure that your dietary choices align with what is permitted, making it not just a source of nourishment but also an act of worship. When you eat what God has allowed and intended for you, it becomes a profound way of expressing your faith and gratitude, and you find harmony not only in your nourishment but also in your spiritual journey. And with that, we come to the end of today's podcast. Thank you for joining us in this exploration of thought-provoking topics. We encourage you to share this knowledge with others who might find it insightful, as knowledge is most valuable when shared. We appreciate your feedback in the comments section, and we kindly request that you do so with respect and courtesy. Let's foster a community of learning and understanding, where we share ideas and insights in a positive and constructive manner. Until next time, take care and goodbye. Please like, share, and comment on video. Do not forget to subscribe channel and hit the bell icon for updates.